in fundamentals of nursing and uh, and by names known as Kiden Robina. In this session today we are going to look at introduction to nursing and by the end of this session you should be able to define nursing, explain the role of nurses, describe the history of nursing, discuss the status of nursing profession in South Sudan. So let us look at nursing as a science and art. So nursing involves both art, uh, that is compassion and caring, and science, that is uh, it is knowledge based, because we base on knowledge to treat patients, and we need to be kind and compassionate also when caring for the patients. So. Uh, nursing is a profession that is centered around patient care and well-being. We, our target is to take care of the patients and to make sure that they are okay. Patient-centered care is the focus of nursing practice, inclusive of individuals, families, and communities. We look at the different individuals uh, we look at their families and also as uh, the, the, the community as a whole. When someone falls sick, the family and the community has to be involved in taking care of uh, such individuals. Um, purpose of nursing, one is fostering health. We foster health. We treat those who are sick and we uh, also help the, the people around also to prevent diseases. Then facilitating healing and the growth. As nurses, we don't uh, heal the patients, but we only facilitate their healing and the growth. We make sure that uh, we give uh, drugs on time. We teach them on how to live healthy lives. And in that case, uh, they can be able to heal uh, just in case they are sick. We teach them on changes in lifestyle. How, so like for instance, if someone smokes, if someone drinks, we can teach the person about the disadvantage of such practices to make sure that he, he um, changes and becomes a better person. Preventing disease, I think that one is now clear. Illness, injury, and disability when individuals face health challenges. Features of nursing. Nursing has the following features. Holistic care. When we are caring for a patient, we don't only look at the physical part, but we counsel the patient, we involve the family, and we also involve the religion, or uh, the, we give the spiritual support. So we look at all these aspects of health. We look at these aspects of the society because they affect uh, the patient's life. Someone may be sick not because uh, of malaria, but because he is stressed. So we involve um, all these aspects, and that is what we call the holistic care. So you as a nurse, even if you are of a certain religion, if the patient that you are caring for is not of that religion, you should not force him to become part of your religion. But just to make sure that you involve someone who is of his religion to make sure that he can get that spiritual support. Then patient-centered, the care that we give to the patients is individual-centered. You may have two patients who are suffering from malaria, but we know that dizzy patients, their bodies react differently. One person may have malaria and is having severe headache, but the other one may have malaria and is uh, having diarrhea. The other one may have stomach ache. So the care we give to these patients is uh, different. It's not the same, despite the fact that they all suffer from malaria. So the care we give to them is individualized, and that's why we say it is patient centered. Evidence-based nursing practice is informed by the best available evidence 
from research and clinical experience the evidence that people have from research the evidence that they have got from the clinical practice is what informs us or what gives us what to do so um, we do a lot of reading we read the research materials we read people's experiences to make sure that we give the best to our patients and that is because the nursing of these days is not all about only giving injections but it is more of uh, the modern world because there are many things that are taking place so more research has given a rise to new knowledge and we embrace that and we also put it in practice uh, features of nursing practice uh, we are still continuing so in the nursing practice we also do assessment and the diagnosis as the patient comes to you you look at the patient's face to see if the patient is having um, a gloomy face the, the patient is having pale face uh, the lips are dry eyes are sunken the skin looks dry so all this we put them together and then we can come up with a nursing diagnosis and this diagnosis can um like for instance if the patient has those signs that i have mentioned you can say that the patient is having deficient fluids in the body and this is your diagnosis then the next feature is the planning and the implementation so after coming up with such diagnosis we now plan now what are we going to do the way we have seen this patient so you sit down and plan and say that this patient is having dry skin the patient is urinating little urine uh, but the patient still ambulates and is able to drink and is not vomiting so for that reason we are going to uh, administer fluids to the patient to make sure that him uh, he takes to increase on the fluid content in the body so that is your plan so the implementation is now when you put that into practice you go and get the fluids um maybe you you bring a homemade juice you give to the patient according to what the patient likes then the patient can drink there you are now implementing so the implementation of this sometimes may also involve their family members uh, in doing such then the other feature is education and advocacy we educate the family about to the kind of disease the patient is suffering from and we also advocate for the patient like for instance if there are things that the patient does not like then we can also uh, bring it to the attention of the family that if the patient is not comfortable with this then uh, they can make a change because we take more time with the patient than uh, the family members so that is uh, the role of uh, the family i mean the role of uh, i mean one of the features of the nurse then the other feature is in uh, our collaboration we work together with the physicians therapists and the pharmacists because the physician will be there to prescribe the drugs diagnose and prescribe the drugs then the pharmacist will give us the medication then like i said that nursing is holistic we involve all the other aspects to make sure that the patient's health improves then ethical practice um, nurses adhere to a code of ethics that includes principles like respect for autonomy for autonomy like um, the patient has the right to make a decision on what is supposed to be done to him he has the freedom to decide on which kind of care he gets or not then beneficence so what we do to the patient should be beneficial to the patient should do uh, be of importance to the patient then non malfeasance uh, it should do not bring any harm to the patient so these are uh, some of the features that we can uh, talk about as long as as far as ethical practice is concerned 
then cultural competence cultures are different we come from different cultures we have different cultures and the patients also have different cultures so for that matter therefore it is important to study the culture of the patient and act accordingly you don't do something that will harm the patient all that you do should do bring healing to the patient this is so diverse uh, beginning from the way we dress the way we talk and even what we eat uh, do differ so we should have that in mind as we care for patients continuous learning as a nurse you need to always search and learn for new um, information new knowledge new practices why because things keep on changing medicine keeps on changing every now and then there are some practices that were good in the uh, previous years but right now they are outdated so uh, more things are coming in so nurses always have to keep abreast with the new knowledge safe practice nursing has to involve safety whatever that you give to the patient should do uh, be safe and it should not do harm to the patient a patient who has come with malaria should not end up going home with any infection or sepsis so the patient should do instead uh, have improved life than uh, deteriorating life that's why in the hospital hospitals have to always be kept clean and the, uh, be disinfected most of the time because there are lots of microorganisms so should be kept free from such then critical thinking as a nurse you look at a situation if there is a problem you look at it analyze and come up with a solution and this is what critical thinking is don't look at the issues just on the surface deep deep someone is having um, malaria you are administering the drugs this person is not improving what could be the problem dig deep, deep you may end up realizing that this person is having stress or this person has other social issues that he are affecting him the other feature is documentation so nurses maintain it it is work not done so for that matter therefore nurses uh, always have to document their work to make sure that they are able to mean to keep good records it is very very important if you don't document another nurse may come and give medication that you have already given and as a result cause harm to the patient another point is emotional support um nurses like i said before give counseling to the patients based on what the patient is going through because we want to provide that holistic kind of care to make sure that all aspects of the patient's life are catered for then advancement opportunities with the nursing the sky is the limit everything is possible with nothing so you can um, become a pediatric nurse you can become an oncology nurse you can become a critical care nurse you can uh, become a manager nurse you can become a nurse practitioner you nurses have also been involved in your research and many other things so there are very very many opportunities in nursing whoever is doing nursing is doing the right profession nursing responsibilities and roles so autonomy and accountability a nurse should stand strong and uh, independent to make decision on the care that she can give to the patient and should be accountable for it should stand if she made a mistake she should accept not matter of doing things and running away then the other one is caregiver 
The other role is advocate, advocate for the patient. Um, take an example, critically ill patients and they are being cared for at home. In most cases, their relatives get tired. Like for instance, tired of cleaning feces, tired of um, changing the diapers. So because of that, they start now starving the patient. They don't give uh, the patient um, fluids. They don't give the patient uh, food because they don't want to clean. But it is the right of the patient to eat, even if the patient is going to die. So the only thing is these people have to be uh, educated. But uh, you also need to advocate for the patient and say it is the right of the patient to uh, eat and uh, drink. Then later you can educate the, the caregivers on how they can easily clean the patient. For instance, if the patient, they can study the signs that the patient is about to urinate or the patient is um, about to pass tools, then they can give the bedpan, then the person empties in it and uh, takes it away. Then uh, the other role is communicator mm -hmm. and the manager. history of nursing when we look at history of nursing ancient we look at the ancient civilization so during the ancient civilization basically countries like egypt greece and rome were the powerful countries at that time so the observation was women played a bigger role in caring for the sick and the wounded within uh, that time and in those countries then they, in, during the Middle, middle Ages, that is uh, 500 to 1500 CE, uh, here religious orders like the Benedictines and the Sisters of Charity, they were the ones involved so much in care, providing health care and the nursing services in Europe. So the role of nursing was closely tied to religious and the spiritual care. Florence Nightingale, that is in the 19th century, and she is considered to be the founder of modern nursing. She looked at a number of things other than giving the person medicine. She considered things like sanitation, hygiene, and the importance of data and the, uh, uh, data collection and analysis. And that means that she was involved in research. And because of that, she uh, emphasized on the fact that the environment should be kept clean and the, the uh, patient should be kept hygienic to make sure that at least um, the patient improves very fast. The other is um, the American Civil War, which was in 1861 to 1865. And here, it played a pivotal role in the development of nursing in the United States. So this is where uh, nurses like Clara Barton and the, but, uh, and the Dorothy Dix were very, very prominent during that period of time because they were always uh, caring for those who were wounded in the war. And the Clara Barton was now recognized as the angel angel of the battlefield because of the kind of work that she did during that time. So in the late 19th to early 20th century, nursing schools and the professional organizations began to emerge. So the American Nurses Association also emerged and the, uh, this emphasized on the nursing education and the practice standards and these practice standards were formalized so in the world war one that was in 1914 to 1918 for nurses meaning that there was increased demand for nurses and this was the time when people were in serious war and they, uh, they had already recognized remember in the 19th century, they had, I mean, in the 1896, they had already in, uh, recognized 
uh, the, the presence of nurses and the work that they do because they were already school. So the community, the society was already aware of the importance of nurses. And when this war of World War I started, there was a bigger need, there was greater need for the, the services provided by nurses in the, uh, in the war. So in the World War II, that was in 1939 to 1945, nursing played a crucial role during World War II, with the nurses serving in combat zones and providing care to soldiers. So they moved together with the soldiers, providing care to those who were wounded during the war. So the war further highlighted the need for skilled nursing professionals. So in the mid 20th century, the mid 20th century saw the expansion of nursing roles and specialization. So nurse practitioners emerged as advanced practice nurses with additional training. And in this case, this was very, very uh, important in the profession, meaning that there was now uh, much services that they were rendering and live around that advanced services because there was already uh, increase. I mean, there was improvement in the kind of training. So in the late 20th century, up to the present where we are now, nursing continued to evolve with increasing emphasis of evidence-based practice currently and there is more of research and healthcare technology that has been evolved so the role of nurses expanded to include leadership positions nurse educators and nurse researchers so this is very important in the early years the doctors were the ones uh, in the leadership and they were the ones also teaching the nurses but again currently as we talk nurses teach nurses and they, they, they their leadership is also different that's why we have the nurses council we have associations that are basically for nurses and not for doctors we also have nurses who are now involved in research and we have seen their work being published and, and this is a very good improvement. So in the 21st century, uh, nursing has adapted to the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century, including the integration of digital health, telehealth, and the, a growing focus on population. So when we, when we talk about digital health, we talk about the use of uh, computers, the use of softwares, that are important in the health and the most of these uh, have been used others have been used even for diagnosing mm -hmm. diseases and the others uh, for uh, keeping records and many other things then the telehealth here currently the um, the telehealth has become actually a point of focus more so during this time uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic came in. Uh, there were many cases where a nurse just communicates to the doctor through the phone and describes everything the patient is suffering from and the, the doctor prescribes on the phone. And the, also the patients themselves, there are some patients who will also call the doctor and they also uh, they get the attention of the doctor through the phone all through the social media. So this is how telehealth has uh, come in to give um, support to the healthcare system. So let us look at status of nursing in South Sudan. In South Sudan, the status of nursing profession is still uh, a critical issue and the, the quality and the access uh, accessibility of healthcare in the country is still in jeopardy. It is difficult to know the accurate number of qualified nurses in South Sudan because at the moment they, there is no single regulatory body that regulates this. And the, um, the nursing and midwifery professions 
face many challenges, such as uh, lack of recognition, they are not recognized. There's an act that is still in parliament, not signed. So at the moment, um, the nurses operate, but they are not actually recognized. Uh, there's low remuneration, inadequate training, poor supervision and support, and the absence of legal and regulatory frameworks. Many training schools have come in, they are training nurses, but it is the Ministry of Health tries to follow them up, but um, there are even no enough resources to, to carry out these activities. So you realize that the standard uh, of um, people trained is actually very low and this is still a major challenge to to the country so the nursing and medieval free council of south sudan uh, was established through a ministerial with the vision of achieving the highest ethical standards of nursing and medical free practice. So this is the council that is supposed to regulate the nurses and midwives in South Sudan. So is responsible for setting and enforcing standards, registering and licensing practitioners, developing curricula and the accreditation system and the promoting continuous professional development. But as we talk right now, they are yet to start their activities. Career development in a nursing. So in nursing, like I mentioned before, that there are many opportunities in nursing. You can become any anything in nursing as far as uh, you are determined. So you can become, uh, you can advance in the nursing roles. You can. Uh, become a clinical nurse specialist, a nurse practitioner, nurse midwife, nurse anesthetist, and many others. Theoretical framework of nursing practice. So the theoretical framework of nursing practice is a set of concepts, definitions, relationships, and the assumptions that guide the development, implementation, and evaluation of nursing uh, knowledge and practice. So here, uh, it provides a logical and consistent pas uh, basis for understanding, explaining, predicting, and controlling phenomena related to nursing. A theoretical framework can also help nurses to identify gaps in knowledge, generate research questions, and apply evidence-based practice. So basically, this is what the, the theoretical framework is eh, all about. It talks about the concepts, the definitions, and the relationships, and the assumptions. So all these can guide the nurses uh, to develop and implement, then also um, evaluate, like after you have done something, you go through to see how well it has been done, was it beneficial, and things like that. So the theoretical framework of nursing, oh, this I've talked about it, I think it was repeated. So first, uh, we are looking at Florence Nightingale's environmental theory. Like I told you before, that Nightingale was the, 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 the found, is considered to be the founder of the modern nursing. So, um, in her theory, she focused so much on the environment and she often regarded, uh, uh, like I said, she is often regarded as the pioneer of nursing theory. Her focus was on altering the environment to optimize healing conditions, making the environment better so that the person takes in fresh air, the person's um, the person's the respiratory system is not irritated with the maybe pollution and many other things around. So generally, keeping the environment clean and also keeping the person clean. So she emphasized on creating a conducive environment for nature to take its course. 
Nightingale's legacy underscores the significance of surrounding in patient care. Then uh, the other uh, the other one is the Hildegard Papillo's interpersonal model. So for her, a transformative model centered on uh, therapeutic interpersonal relationships. So how uh, she envisioned so much that nurses are seen as counselors, resources, and the surrogates in the patient's journey. So nurses do a lot of counseling, and the, they innovate many things that can uh, improve on the patient's health. Fosters a dynamic nurse-patient bond that supports healing and well being and emphasizes the crucial role of communication and understanding in the nursing practice. So she emphasized that communication is very, very important in nursing practice. Then we have another theorist who is the fire abdelas and he has a uh, theory was on a problem solving approach pioneer the problem solving framework for nursing care and she defined nursing as a means of address uh, as a means to address the health needs of individuals. So to her, she looked at um, identifying the problem of the person and solving it. And she developed a comprehensive list of 21 nursing problem areas. And this we shall look at them when we are looking at nursing process. We shall look at them in two details. So her work underlines the need for tailored solutions to individual health challenges. Then the other theorist is Ida Jean Orlando's nursing situation. So nursing is a response to immediate patient needs. That's what uh, Orlando say. Nurse-client interaction revolves around client behavior, nurse reaction, and nurse action. The way the, person, the client behaves, and the way the nurse reacts and the action that is taken after that there are some patients who um, are arrogant so you as a patient how do you react to that are you also going to become arrogant and yet the patient is sick and needs help so this is what uh, this theory is all about so emphasis um he emphasizes on relieving distress and helplessness through direct assistance. So Orlando's approach underscores the importance of timely and targeting nursing interventions. Then we have another theory that is the Myra Levin's conservation principles. These are formulated uh, well, this, uh, uh, this theorist he formulated four conservation principles which guide nursing practice. And these principles are energy, structured integrity, personal integrity, and social cons integrity conservation. So the, the patient's energy, the structured energy, I mean the, the structured integrate, integrity, personal integrity and the social integrity. When we talk about integrity, it's basically how people look at you as an individual, how the whole structure in the society is being looked at. Is it a society of highly respected people? Is it a society of people who are always in unity, such things? Then as the individual, how is the individual also looked at and the, the social uh, aspect of it. So this, how do we conserve it? So these principles serve as a foundation for holistic nursing care. This is where now the issue of the physical, emotional, 
social and spiritual comes in. So it is where the holistic care approach of nursing was derived from or is what it was based uh, on. So Levin's model um, promotes balance and well-being through preservation, keeping things preserved, keeping things in place. That is uh, uh, what it is uh, all about, making sure that things don't go out of hand. Dorothy Johnson's behavior style system model uh, Dorothy pioneered the behavior system model of uh, nursing. And this one views the patient's behavior as a system with interconnected components and focuses on how patients adapt to illness and navigate recovery. This also aims to enhance patients' ability to cope and thrive during the healing process. As the person is sick, how does the person uh, make sure that he, he collects himself and he uh, improve or fight the disease and he, uh, go through the, the healing process until he becomes okay. Then Martha Rogers, Science of Unitary Human Beings. Uh, this is a groundbreaking perspective that humans are more than the sum of uh, their parts. Uh, unique properties emerge from the interaction of individual elements. And he emphasizes holistic care that he considers the whole person. So uh, this theory emphasizes that there are many, there is another aspect of life that we don't see, that we don't experience always. So these unique properties that we are not used to, in most cases, emerge from the interaction of individual elements. So one element interacts with the other, and this uh, uh, come up. So Roger's theory redefines nursing's approach to patient care, and the well be so Dorothy Orem's self care theory. Orem's theory highlights the importance of meeting self care needs. Nursing intervention becomes necessary when clients cannot fulfill essential needs. So, when clients cannot uh, care for themselves when they cannot do uh, the basic things that they can do for their survival, uh, then that is when the nurse is needed. So stresses, stress, this theory stresses the nurse's role in assisting clients to achieve optimal health, assisting the clients to make sure that they achieve uh, optimal health. So Oren's framework promotes patient empowerment and self-management. Imogen King's theory of goal attainment. So here, uh, King's theory revolves around dynamic interpersonal interactions and focuses on the nurse, the client, and the healthcare system collaboration. So focuses on those uh, three, the nurse, the client, and the health system collaboration. Strives to achieve mutual goals through effective communication and understanding. So for this theory, it emphasizes on the fact that effective communication is very important as far as caring for the patient is concerned. And this has to be between the nurse, the client, and the health system. Like, for instance, the administration of the hospital. So nursing practice is aligned with assisting clients in reaching their health-related objectives. Then we have Betty Nauman's system model. So Nauman's model centers on stress reduction and prevention. 
nursing interventions categorized into primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. So, uh, and this aims to maintain optimal client wellness by addressing stressors and challenges. So, now man's uh, holistic approach emphasizes the interconnectedness of physiological and the environmental factors and the making sure that the wellness of the person is maintained through addressing stressors and challenges that can happen in life. Uh, Sister Kalista Roy's adaptation model. So Roy's model views individuals as adaptive systems in constant interaction with the environment. Nursing assists clients in adapting to physiological and the psychological changes and focuses on holistic well-being, including self-concept and the role function. So Roy's approach underscores nursing's um, role in facilitating adaptation during health and the illness. So basically, that is what uh, it emphasizes on it, uh, it emphasizes on the fact that the nursing care should be focused on um, adapting to physiological and psychological changes and it says that once these are being uh, adapted to you learn how to manage your your psychological challenges uh, you learn how to manage the physiological uh, changes that have taken part, uh, part in your body, then your life can be able to move on. Lydia Holtzy, Core Cure Care Model. So Holtzy model centers around three core components. That is the person, pathologic state, and the body. So, and this emphasizes the importance of addressing both physical and emotional needs both the physical needs and the emotional needs of the person should have to be addressed. So nursing encompasses not only uh, curing, but also caring for patients. Holt's approach highlights the multifaceted nature of nursing practice. Jean Watson's human caring model. Watson's theory highlights the significance of transpersonal uh, caring transactions. Nursing aims to achieve mind, body, soul harmony, and self-healing. Now, this emphasizes on the soul, the mind, and also the body, the three aspects of life and emphasizes the role of nurses in promoting self-knowledge and self-control. Watson's model emphasizes the therapeutic power of empathy and compassion. Rosemary Rizzo passes theory of human becoming. Passes theory emphasizes personal meaning and the value property pro, uh, priorities stresses individual autonomy and the co-creation of patterns with the environment and this theory, theory also emphasizes nursing's goal to facilitate and unfold to facilitate the unfolding of possibilities and the dimensions so passes approach highlights nursing's role in supporting individuals' eh, personal growth to make sure that the individual uh, is able to, to collect himself and uh, grow and become a strong person both in mind and also uh, physically. And we have uh, the last one is eh, Madeleine Leningas Transcultural Nursing uh, Model. So learning as uh, model emphasizes culturally sensitive care. Nursing focuses on individual cultural values, beliefs, and practices. 
and he aims to improve or maintain health by respecting diverse cultural um, backgrounds. So, Leninger's approach emphasizes, um, I mean, enhances nursing's effectiveness in multicultural healthcare settings. So, basically, uh, here it emphasizes so much about the individual uh, cultural values, beliefs, and practices. And this is what I had talked about earlier that when caring for the patient, you have to make sure that you respect the patient's eh, culture and the beliefs. There are things that they look at as wrong, so don't push it onto them that they are right, unless you are very sure that eh, it is the right thing to do. So that is uh, the introduction to uh, nursing fundamentals. And since this is uh, the first day, we shall end there for today. And I wish all of you well as we meet in the next session.